I was out dancing. Suddenly I get the feeling that someone's staring at me. I turn around and I'm looking into these big brown eyes. Man, was he tall and cool and smooth, real smooth. We talked. He doesn't dance, but then again, nobody's perfect. Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this video, we're going to take a gander at the death of Richard Oland. This one's a real whodunit. Kinda. Not really though. Richard Oland was a successful businessman in New Brunswick, Canada. And his family owned Moosehead Breweries, if you're looking for an else up. Eh, it's not great. But in 2011, he was found dead, murdered, in his office. There was of course a big ol' investigation, and it turned out the person who did it maybe, may not have been the person with the most to gain. But that's where it gets interesting. Alrighty, let's go. Richard Oland was born in 1941 and grew up with his older brother Derek in St. John's. They were a wealthy family, having been there for generations, part of the upper elite, and with the other notable families in the area, having an enormous amount of influence over the region. Old money, boys clubs, cronyism, that kind of shit. His family had founded the Moosehead Brewery in 1867, and after studying biochemistry, he went to work in the family business. Did you know that 94% of the beer brewed in this country comes from two breweries? Some choice, huh? Imagine if there were only two vegetables. What if there were only two kinds of dogs? What if there were only two girls in the world? Who of us would get dates? That explains the attraction to Moosehead. Moosehead isn't brewed by the big two. It's brewed by the oldest independent brewery in Canada, still owned and operated by the original family since 1867. Moosehead, for those of us who like to make choices. He married Constance Connell in 1965, and together they had three children, Elizabeth, Jacqueline, and Dennis. Known around town as Big Dick, or uh, rather just Dick. He was known around town as an energetic guy, but he was also quite a difficult person. He had, uh, let's just say, an uncompromising nature, which actually led to some very public legal battles with his own brother even in 1980 over the presidency of the company Moosehead Brewery. From the wilderness of Canada, from the land of Yellowknife and Hudson Bay, comes a premium imported beer. One beer brewed hearty and robust to stand head and antlers of the rest. Moosehead. When the father decided Richard's brother Derek should be president of the company, Richard, he was gone. My name is Derek Oland. I am the executive chairman of Moosehead Breweries. I can remember father being so proud because he canned the first beer in Canada here in St. John, and it was what we call a cone top can. It actually was filled on the same filler as the bottles uh, with, a, with a regular crown. He then set up a number of his own businesses, including Kinghurst Estates Limited, Rookville Transport Limited, and the investment firm Far End Corporation. He became quite accomplished after these grew rather successful, collecting business awards and a net worth of about $37 million. As president of the Canada Games, he helped bring them to his hometown in 1985. He received the Order of Canada in 1998, and he was the 2010 winner of an award from the Canadian Yachting Association. The Far End Corporation became his main office, and it was there that his life would end. Just before 9am on June 7, 2011, it was a Thursday, Maureen Adamson, Richard's secretary of over 30 years, arrived to find the door of the office open, which was unusual. Inside, she found a man lying on the floor, not breathing. His body so badly battered, it would take a professional service specialising in cleaning up after bloody crime scenes, days of hosing, scrubbing and painting to erase all traces. Within minutes, the police descended on the building, sealing it off. And then, within hours, 
News spread around town that Richard Oland had been brutally beaten to death. The forensic pathologist counted 45 wounds to Richard's hands, neck, and head during the autopsy. Six of the 47 wounds were found on Richard's hands, likely due to Richard trying to protect himself from his attacker. The attack continued after Richard was defenseless on the floor. Richard's skull was completely broken. The bones of his eye sockets were like a cracked eggshell. Portions of his brain were found on his back. Yuck. On Thursday, July the 7th, 2011, at approximately 8.54 a.m., Public Safety Communication Center received a request for service to attend 52 Canterbury Street, St. John City Center, the office of Richard Olin. It was later determined at the scene that Mr. Olin had expired. On Friday, July the 8th, an autopsy was performed at the Horizon Health Network, St. John Regional Hospital. Preliminary results of the autopsy, coupled with the evidence at the scene, clearly indicated that Richard Olin was a victim of foul play, homicide. There is no evidence at this time to suggest that this was a robbery or a random act. The St. John Police Force Major Crime Unit is in full charge of the investigation. The manner of death and any apparent motive will remain with the investigational team at this time. Reaction on the street today was one of surprise. It's a homicide, really. Well, that's very troubling, definitely. No weapons were found at the scene and Richard's cell phone was missing. And as we see in so many cases, the crime scene was a shit show. You know, police would like open doors without wearing gloves on them. They didn't try and, uh, you know, keep fingerprints, that kind of shit. Like, it was just a terrible job. Richard had last been seen at 6 p.m. the night before. His last meeting was scheduled for sometime that evening with his 45-year-old son, Dennis. Later that night, an employee working on the floor before 6 or 7 o'clock heard exceptionally loud, quick, pounding thumps from above as if someone was banging on a wall, followed by noises that sounded like shuffling. The community was absolutely stricken by the loss of this, you know, really prominent businessman. Well, that's very troubling, definitely. At his funeral, it was packed. His funeral went to the song uh, My Way by Frank Sinatra. All right, it's original, I'll give it that. And I mean, Richard was known for being quite a difficult person to work with. A hard worker, but a bit of a uh, shitster. And obviously Dennis being the last person known to have seen him alive, he came under a lot of suspicion, no shit. Um, they didn't have a great relationship. Richard had very high expectations for Dennis. He didn't have much respect for Dennis and would often call him lazy, leading to some, some nasty fights. Nasty fights which I'm sure could be settled over a cool, crisp Moosehead brewery. Get to know the moose. It also didn't help that in 1988, Dennis fatally injured Richard's prized racehorse uh, when he was driving the horses in a trailer and he served on the highway to avoid killing a cat. This would lead to, you know, a trip to the glue factory. In 2008, the one thing they did bond on, the family boat, burned down after an electrical fire. So, Dennis had acted as his father's financial advisor, and Richard had bankrolled Dennis's divorce several years earlier, paying court costs and purchasing the ancestral family home for Dennis. Dennis had arranged to repay his father $85,000 in legal fees, along with a mortgage on the home of between $500,000 and $600,000, leading to Dennis being on the edge financially. So we've already got quite a lot of tension here. Richard and Dennis had a shite relationship due to just not really respecting each other. Dennis had, you know, damaged some things that Richard loved. Dennis was broke. And adding to that was Richard was having an affair, an eight year affair with a, a real estate agent, and it was a very poorly kept secret. Uh, and Dennis was not a fan of this, he was not happy. He was worried that this would spread around town, and uh, you know, as they were such a prominent family, it just wouldn't look good, bad pure. And so Dennis became suspect numero uno. Shortly after Richard's murder, the family were interviewed. Here's Dennis's interview. So 
I know what Jeffrey Ford, like I said, and Constable Davidson. And uh, what, I'm, oh, what I'm just going to do is just kind of go through, uh, I guess, the events you know, over the last uh, little bit. Okay. And I just wanted to get an idea of, uh, you know, of what you can offer me because, of course, we're, we're looking into everything, talking to everything, everybody about this. And any little bit helps. And uh, any information that you have or that you can lend is certainly, is certainly going to assist us. And uh, so I, I guess you just if you have anything on your mind right now uh, about uh, you know the events, uh, certainly just uh, just go ahead and and, and and we'll talk here. Yeah, well, the biggest thing that's on my mind is is what happened. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this seems to be something that's not. It's pretty clear in my head that he didn't have a heart attack and died. Something's happened to him. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so the first thing that runs through your head is, you know, is this one of those, uh, you know, crackhead type things or whatever, where someone goes in and, you know, does that kind of thing or, you know, like sort of being in the wrong place at the wrong time, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Or as far as anything I have to offer, you know, I mean, is he the easiest guy in the world to get along with? No, mm -hmm. but not to the point where, you know, someone would, you know, who knew him would want to do something to him. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. I mean, I think most people would say, okay, yeah, he's hard to get along with, but he was never, you know, he was never violent. He was never uh, totally, completely unreasonable that you couldn't sort of go, okay, well, you know, that doesn't entirely make sense. But I mean, right. you know, you, well, knowing him as long as we all have, you know, you know a person's character, you sure. know, you know, want to keep your distance, yes. you know, that kind of thing. And yeah. you know, look, with him, it was a lot easier to keep your distance mm -hmm. because uh, it just kept the peace. Right. And uh, and uh, so. You got there around, I'd say, 5.30, yeah. 5.30, Marine's the only one there. Yep. Nobody else is in there. Uh, and what time did what time did you, did you leave, approximately? 6.30. 6.30. Yeah. And that whole time, it was just basically about this issue with the genealogy and the, what you had found yeah. that sort of thing. Yes, yeah, it was that and then, you know, the, the health asshole and stuff. And, and so, everything. no no business or anything while you were there? No, not at all. No, not at all. Did anybody call that you remember or did you pick up the phone and have a conversation? Did anybody come in to the business? Nobody came in. Um, I mean, you hear noise, so like, because there's people upstairs and so, I mean, I don't hear a robot we're hearing it, mm -hmm. so I don't hear anything, but I mean, you hear noise, so you know, I might have heard doors opening and closing, but I don't know. Did you hear stuff from upstairs? Anything from upstairs? I think I did. Okay. But I don't know. Uh, Dennis, I have to ask you, ask you this. Did you have any involvement in your, in your father's death? No. Uh, I ask you that because you're the last person there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's something that I have to cover. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have no reason to want my father dead, to kill him, to... I mean... No. I mean, we've had our things, but no, I wouldn't rob someone of the fun that they're having, and you know, it's, it's just no. Do you, can you think of who would have an interest in that? Who would benefit from that the most? Because of a grudge or revenge? That For any of? reason, do you see uh, who would benefit the most of your from your father's death? Someone who wanted. Twenty dollars out of a wall to buy drugs. Um, don't know, but no, I. I think he's pissed a lot of people off, but not to that point where someone would, you know, would want to want to kill somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I, n no one I know, or no one I can think of. I mean, those of us who are closest to him. Are probably the most annoyed by him, mm -hmm. but you know we we have enough distance from him that he doesn't bother us in that kind of a way. Mm -hmm. You know, no. Do you see? Do you see uh, any any other reason why uh, someone would do this? Any other reason why uh, the type of person that would do it? Someone who's pretty sick, I guess. Someone who, I mean, I can't, there's no one who has, has lost money by him. There's no one who he has, uh, as far as I know, insulted in, in any way. I mean, there's, there's no one that, 
he has left out. I mean, I'm sure there were some of his old sailor buddies that were upset that they weren't included in the in the new sort of boat and what was going on there. But I mean, that's stuff that everybody in life has to deal with. Mm -hmm. You know, not, not to the point to, to want to harm him. Do you have anybody in mind that will come to mind uh, to you um, as being involved in this? No. You know, when, we, when we were first talking and, and uh, you mentioned, I said, you know, um, about why we were here and, and this sort of thing, and, and you said, uh, you mentioned a crackhead or something, maybe doing something like this. Is there any reason why, you, you know? That's what you hear about on the radio. You hear these taxi drivers getting killed, or you hear, you know, no, I have no, nothing. Mm -hmm. Somebody has done something to my father. You've mm -hmm. told me that. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, but that's all you'll tell me. You won't tell me anything else. And, you know, what happened to him? What did they do? Are you asking me that yes, question? Or yes. Well, again, I, all I know is what I, that uh, the death did occur. I don't know much more than that because I haven't been there. I've been up here, so for the details, I don't know, and I would share them with you. Is there, I, uh, anyways, yeah. Is there something? Is there something else that you know that that happened that that you're not telling me? Uh, you know, in this that you know. No. Two weeks after the murder, police publicly said they believed that Richard was killed by someone he knew. I'm standing here on Gondola Point Road in Rossay where St. John police are executing a search warrant. They've been here since the noon hour. Sergeant Glenn Hayward won't tell us who lives here, but neighbours say it's the home of Dennis Oland, the son of prominent businessman Richard Oland, who was found dead in his St. John office last Thursday. It's a property that's been in the Oland family for generations and was once the home of Richard Oland's father, Philip Oland, who was once the head of Moosehead Breweries. Sergeant Hayward won't say what they're looking for or even confirm if it's related to the homicide investigation. In November 2011, after the police, they searched Dennis's home, they found a jacket with Richard's DNA on it, his blood on it. It would be two years later that the police would charge Dennis with second degree murder. He would get out on bail though by his uncle, Derek, who hated his father. But I think Derek and Dennis, they were on good terms. And so a month later, there was an inquiry to see if the police had enough evidence to charge Dennis with uh, his father's murder. The prosecutor argued that the motive for the killing was financial, that Dennis asked his father for financial assistance during the visit, his father refused, and he killed him in a state of rage. I mean, that could have happened, though one thing to note that if, um, that in Richard's, you know, in the case of his death, all his money would go to his wife, who's still alive, Constance. It wouldn't go to Dennis, so it wasn't like a um, inheritance murder. Maybe he just was really pissed off. Again, this was probably something they could have settled if that happened. Over a nice, cool moosehead. Moosehead. Ugh, this is not good. The defense would say that the uh, prosecution simply had tunnel vision, that they were solely focusing on Dennis rather than, well, anybody else. That they were convinced it was Dennis from the very get-go. Dennis's legal defense would become the most expensive murder defense in Canadian history. The prosecution didn't have a murder weapon, a clear time of death, or significant DNA evidence to tie Dennis to the crime. A few bloodstains matching Richard's DNA were found on Dennis's brown Hugo Boss sport coat, but no blood was found in his car or on his shoes. And the scene, as I said, it was extremely bloody, so the marks on his jacket they were kind of inconsistent with the scene of the crime. Cell phone records were submitted showing Richard's phone, the one missing since the murder, had pinged off a tower at 6.44 p.m. on July 6th, 2011, after Dennis left Richard's office, and near the location Dennis said he stopped after visiting his father. The phone, it's never been found. He probably fucked it in the ocean. But, I mean, that's interesting that his dad's phone that's now missing went with Dennis? Just saying. Maureen Adamson, Richard's secretary, said that when she was getting ready to leave work the day of the killing, when Richard and Dennis had that meeting, they seemed very friendly towards each other. But also, Dennis was wearing that jacket. 
the jacket that was found to have Richard's blood in it. But again, it was tiny. We thank all the jurors for their careful and complete consideration of all of the evidence placed before them. They have completed their duty as the law requires and as explained to them by Mr. Justice Walsh. We will be making no additional comments at this time with regards to the outcome of the trial. Dennis Oland, he was convicted of second degree murder in December 2015. Life in prison, no possibility of parole for 10 years. Moosehead. Good evening, everyone. Dennis Olin may well be spending his last few hours behind bars right now. The New Brunswick Court of Appeals has tossed out his conviction and ordered a new trial for the murder of his father five summers ago. But we're not done yet, because a year later, the Court of Appeals threw out Dennis's conviction and called the previous trial, they called it a mistrial. And then in 2019, after another trial, not guilty. What I say is, um, I'm a little uncomfortable with people coming up and saying congratulations as if this was some day to celebrate because it's important to bear in mind that Dennis lost his dad to a brutal murder eight years ago. Uh, the very same day that the body was found, before the police had even talked to Dennis, they were discussing putting 24-hour surveillance on Dennis simply because he was the last known person. That same day, less than 24 hours after the body was discovered, the police spent two hours that night at the police station telling Dennis that they knew he was the killer. And the only fact they had at that time was that he was the last known person. Dennis then spent the next two years waiting to be charged because, as you know, the chief of police held press conferences talking about how they were confident that the killer was someone known to, uh, to Dick, uh, that the public wasn't at risk. Then he gets charged and he spends the next six years in this odyssey through the court system and to the Court of Appeal, bail applications, Supreme Court of Canada, back again, an argument whether the trial would be before a judge or judge and jury. So I don't really think today's a day to celebrate so much as what I'm hoping is, you recognize it's a day to acknowledge the fact that Dennis did not kill his father. Our public polling showed that 27% of the people in this city thought Dennis was guilty. And I sincerely hope that having heard the verdict of not guilty from a judge who looked carefully through all the evidence, who spent <coughs> months considering whether the Crown could prove that Dennis was the killer and decided they could not. I hope those 27% of the people will admit they were wrong and I hope that everybody in St. John now understands and appreciates that Dennis Olin did not kill his father. Two months later, Dennis Olin's family renewed its offer of a reward for information to assist St. John Police in solving the murder of Richard Oland. Celebrate will be when the actual perpetrators of this crime are finally caught and brought to justice. And I sincerely hope, we all sincerely hope, and the Olin family sincerely hopes that the St. John police force will finally reinvigorate the investigation and start doing the investigation that should have been done eight years ago to find the real perpetrators of this terrible, terrible crime. However, the police, they said, we have no plans to resume the investigation because we know Dennis did it. The judge, he would sign off on the case, saying that although there was much to implicate Dennis in his father's murder, there were too many missing pieces to prove guilt beyond reasonable doubt. Interesting case, one in which we could possibly see the perpetrator of a brutal crime walk free. I think the message to learn here is if you ever do kill somebody, get the most expensive legal defense in your country's history, you'll probably be fine. No other suspects have ever been implicated in Richard's murder. Although, as I said, the defense, they, they just claimed the police were so, you know, laser focused on Dennis, they never bothered looking for anybody else. Maybe it was somebody else. I mean, there are a lot of unknowns, maybe too many, to definitively point the finger at Dennis. Maybe. 
Thank you so, so much for watching, and special thank you to Moosehead, who didn't sponsor this video. But, I mean, I wouldn't recommend their beer to you anyway. Unless you're Canadian and from New Brunswick, then it's amazing. Yeah. Thanks again for watching. I will see you, as always, real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. I don't know why I keep drinking this. My cat.